Mana production! <laughs> Automating mana production with endoflames. Now of course endoflames are just one of many flowers for producing mana, but I like to use them because they work. They b basically use anything that a furnace would burn um, to produce mana. And since I have a... I already have automation in place to produce charcoal from a tree farm, I always have more than enough charcoal and more than I'm I'm producing more charcoal that I'm using and I'm actually even voiding some so um, this works out really well for me and what I like about this method is that it's very scalable and it's totally renewable so you can always produce more charcoal with a tree farm Oops. and so here's what I've got and I actually recently, very recently, simplified this because I was using item droppers um, and I realized I don't need to use item droppers, I can use item valves to do everything. Um, so what I've got here are three item valves and I have endo flames underneath the item valves in a particular configuration for, op for optimal uh, mana production and that is um, that the whoops, the end of flames will pick up a piece of coal that's two blocks away from it in a north north south east or west direction and one block away from it in a diagonal direction so the most optimal way to get the most out of a single item valve is to have a row of five going in each of the two directions and then four in the four corners. So as you can see, <laughs> every time an end of flame picks up a piece of coal, another one drops down. And it's actually pretty simple to do this. Um, I've got a chest up here that's always full of charcoal. And of course there are many methods you could use to do this, but what I what I basically have is an ME export bus that's always keeping this thing full so whenever a piece of charcoal is pulled out the ME export bus will import more so this chest is always gonna be full of course you could use a um, barrel or whatever it doesn't matter just so that you have some piece of inventory that's always full of charcoal or coal or some other thing that the end of flame can burn and then we've got of course inventory cables connecting everything together so connecting all the item valves to the inventory machine inventory manager and then the chest itself is actually touching the machine inventory manager so we don't need an item valve there and this is it um, I'm again I'm using variables in a for each loop you don't really have to do this especially since we only have three item valves here you could have three triggers and that wouldn't be such a bad thing what I like about this method is that if I ever decide to expand this and have you know 20 item valves I can still just use the same um, trigger and it'll be really easy to expand so again <laughs> I've got a, a white variable which I created by clicking the create container variable and by default it's white so I didn't change the type of variable or the color of the variable under containers again we select all of our item valves so we have three item valves that we select and then the second variable is just an orange variable so it starts out white all we do is go boom to change it to orange and then we create a trigger and I set the trigger to every two seconds um, it could be every s the default is one second I like to do every two seconds just to uh, reduce lag and it's plenty responsive so and then we have this for each the for each is down here so we click that to get our little for each um, item and then we connect a condition to our for each so for each list is our white variable which remember is all of our item valves so that's our list it's a, our white variable is a list of three item valves and then we have just an element which is a orange variable which is blank so the for each is going to take for each <laughs> item valve it's going to set the orange variable to that item valve and then go through this condition so for each item valve we're going to check this condition the condition is the orange variable which is an item valve 
Check to see if we have any charcoal, coal, or a block of coal. Now in this case I'm always using charcoal, but just in case I decide in the future that I want to switch to coal or blocks of coal or whatever, I can do that. Um, and then make sure we say if any. By default it requires all. Um, if you do that you're going to end up with a whole bunch of coal everywhere because it's going to keep dropping it until it has all three of these, which it never will. So, um, so if any of these three items exist, um, if the condition is true, we don't do anything because we've already got an item there. If the condition is false, meaning there isn't a piece of coal sitting there, then we do this input output. So the input is this chest up on the top, which is always full of charcoal. So we go into this chest and we look for one of these items. Coal, charcoal, or colored block of colored block of coal. Whoops, that's not what I wanted there, but a block of coal. <laughs> and we're going to whitelist it, meaning we want to grab one of these items and we don't want to grab anything else. And then he, this is important. Right click on each one of those, click to specify the amount and that we only want one. Otherwise, it's going to grab a bunch or potentially grab a bunch. So right click each one specify amount one so that's the input and then our output is our orange variable which is an item valve and we can just blacklist nothing because we're already filtering here and that's it so now as we can see it's checking the item valve if there's nothing there if there's something there it does nothing if the coal is there, it does nothing. Oh, see, I dropped a bunch of them there while I was playing around. But And if there's nothing there, it drops a piece of charcoal from this chest. And as it's pulling charcoal from this chest, our ME system is dropping it back in. So we could even have a dirt chest here or something real small. It doesn't matter how this can be a very small inventory. And that's it. Now, if you wanted to make this easier to understand, um, you could just have a trigger and an input and an output for each one of these item valves so it's the same as this we just get rid of the for each and instead of selecting the variable variable we select the item valve so that's what you would do if you only had one item valve or if you just wanted to create a separate trigger for each one and that's it that's how we automate our mana production with endo flames and as you can see we have tons of mana here these are filling up all the time, and every time we use them, um, they, f they fill up again. And it's keeping all these mana pools I'm full take a because quick of our peek sparks. at the charcoal generation. So here we've got our tree farm. <laughs> this is a quite a large tree farm. And if you're just doing the mana production that, or if you just want to do the mana production that I showed you before, you won't need one nearly this large, but I'm also using this for RF generation, um, for power generation. So basically I've got a planter, a mine factory loaded planter um, that plants trees. I have an upgrade, a diamond upgrade, which increases the radius to nine. Um, you might not even need an upgrade at all if you're just um, doing some a little bit of mana generation. Then I also have a harvester over here which is also mine factory reloaded and I have actually two harvesters um, because one harvester ha is not really able to keep up with this sufficiently so with two harvesters it does a much better job and down below I have some slimes <laughs> what's hurting me right now is this sludge boiler so the sludge boiler takes the sludge out of the um, harvesters and it produces all kinds of other stuff with it um, I'm actually using this because it makes the harvesters run faster. If you don't hook a sludge boiler up to your harvester, it will harvest extremely slowly. Another tree farm here. I also have, I'm farming some other stuff too, but mostly it's trees. So I'm producing a whole lot of wood. Um, and then this wood is coming in. Now, of course, you could just use the wood as a... Uh, you can throw it, throw wood at the end of flames and they'll burn that too. But um, they'll they'll get a lot more out of charcoal. 
So what I've got is I have um, I have an item network set up, and I'm not going to get into the de all the details of how to set how I set up this item network. But basically, I've got some Ender IO item conduits that are bringing the um, wood into this chest. They're all dropping the wood into this chest, as you can see. And I've got I actually have one, two, three, four, five um, alloy smelters that are pulling from this chest. So I have the alloy smelters, the Ender IO alloy smelters, set up. Um, to pull from the chest next to it. And as you can see, this one is producing three charcoal at a time right now, and it's dropping it into this and barrel. And that's it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below. And if you, if you learned something from this or you enjoyed it, please click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. And I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks for watching.